Well, thanks to um, Gareth and Paul for inviting me to do this paper for Internet Archaeology, which actually made me uh, get down to writing a lot of stuff which I've been thinking about for quite a long time. And um, for those of you who do geophysics, you, you'll know that there's a lot of time spent doing quite repetitive things out in the field, and there's a lot of time for mulling over ideas, which is one of the things that I like about it most, actually. So this paper has been growing and growing through a, a lot of uh, standing in fields, moving strings and walking up and down. Um, and really what I want to explore is the idea that um, uh, geophysics is often seen as something that is highly objective and very scientific. Um, and what I want to just briefly go through today is that geophysics is a way of seeing uh, and it's as creative as anything else in archaeology. Really archaeology is such a creative subject. Um, and so within something that is scientific and objective, there is also a, a kind of poetry uh, and there's a world of stories that are hidden within the visual data that we get out of the ground. Um, the images that I'll be showing are mainly magnetometry, just because that's what I work with mostly and have images of, <laughs> but uh, this can be applied very much to any, any kind of uh, geophysical surveying. Um, so really, what I want to explore is the idea that uh, the images that we get in geophysics are the result of numbers, numbers that come from forms of resistance in the, in the ground, or magnetic uh, results, or uh, the results of radar. And then what we get is these images that we form through monochromatic uh, relations of blacks and whites, or all sorts of other different kinds of lines and dots. But through those, we're able to sink into the ground we're able to use what we have as an archaeological imagination to plunge beneath the surface and imagine the invisible through those numbers and things. So things that actually seem quite scientific and objective become uh, a story. You get these shadows of the past coming out. So all that time spent walking up and down in fields starts to turn into something where we look at a, a surface or a hill and in our minds, we can plunge underneath and we can start thinking about the relations of geology, how we relate to the ground, and how different things have come and gone over time. So, in science, there's a long been uh, a tradition of visualising things in order to understand. So, we've got things like the beautiful geological drawings, uh, Darwin's beautiful drawings of birds to think about how beaks worked and things like that. We start to see how drawings and making visualisations aren't just about final output, but they're about whole <coughs> process of thought and thinking through ideas and trying to work things out. And so as we draw things out in the field, we start to relate uh, mind and place together. We start to uh, think deeper into the ground. And this is as relevant for geophysics as it is for something like drawing out on site. You're slowly plunging your mind deeper into that area of landscape that you're working within. And the tools in which we use, different lenses through which we see, force us to think in different ways. And they um, push us on, sort of the enlightenment uh, develops and through our curiosity and through the different lenses that these technologies allow. So if you think of the developments that have happened in the last 10 years, the things that we can now see of the invisible and the subsurface that we could never see before, are giving us a totally different idea of the ground that we live upon. So we're able to go right down through the stratigraphy. And um, in thinking about this, I was reminded of what Harry Hess talked about when he was talking about um, the idea of plate tectonics. And uh, when he introduced plate tectonics to the world, he said, this is a really, really complicated idea. You're trying to think about uh, processes that are really difficult to get your head around. You're trying to imagine something that you can't see you're trying to think about uh, time periods that are really difficult. So what I want you to do is speculate imaginatively uh, and sort of poetically uh, think through the ground. And I really like that idea of uh, speculative imagination. Uh, and that's what geophysics is, really. It's about expanding your imagination onto the ground. And in some ways, geophysics is quite like photography, um, in that uh, you're kind of capturing the light, you're capturing a, a sense of visual that isn't necessarily what's there in reality, but it has all these implications for how we think about time in terms of a snapshot uh, or you know what comes into the image. Uh, 
Oh, sorry, the picture's moved a bit. So Roland Barthes uh, talks about um, cameras as clocks for seeing, which I think is a really nice idea, the fact that these visuals start to become something of a temporal nature. And if we think about um, geophysics on a large scale, that actually allows us to have an image of what's underneath the ground, but that we can start to think about whole landscapes and all the different temporalities that are working within those. So within one bit of geophysics, you get a lot of different layers of things going on. Not only do you get able to see different scales of time in terms of human action, so things like uh, a structure that's been built over a long period of time and that has endured. Uh, so here, this is part of a Roman town that I work on. And this big feature up here is the... Oh, I can't really point to it. There. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, um, uh, the town wall. And then out here, we have all the structures and mortuary. You, know, you see the circles and the squares, uh, mortuary enclosures, things like that. And here there's a big, big quarry uh, that's not visible. So there's all these different layers of uh, activity that have taken different times to make, different times to create, and they've endured for different lengths of time. But also there's that really nice idea that um, uh, a story Massey talked about, the temporalities of Tascape with the temporalities of tectonics. <coughs> Within the geophysical image, you're seeing both the geology and human action all combined into one quite flat image. And we have that lovely task of beginning to unpick it. So as geophysicists, when you begin to look at those images, you're slowly unraveling all these different kinds of information. But also within that image, you have the temporality of the person who's collected the data. So you have all the little decisions that have been made. So, oh, we have to go around the trees, because the, uh, you put the GPS on work with the trees, or by that point, I was quite hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so you have lots and lots of different uh, experiences, um, and I suppose that's the thing, it's human experience uh, mapped onto these uh, images, and it's all these little things that actually are making geophysics so lovely. So once again, we've gone from that flat image of algorithms and data to something that's really rich and full of things that come out both about ourselves now working on the data and our relationship to it, but also all those muddled, beautiful things of geology and human action in the past. So I just want to talk about the different things that we go through when we work with geophysics. And the first is data collection. <coughs> and as I was talking about at the beginning, walking up and down in a field gives you plenty of time to uh, get to know that field in more detail than you ever thought you'd know that field. <laughs> so it's that idea of um, Hayden Lorimer has this lovely idea of an earthbound geography that repeated action over a, a particular landscape allows a knowledge to develop about that place that's very acute. So for those of you who do geophysics, you'll know that walking up and down and up and down, you begin to sense minute differences in topography, or you start to remember how one thing relates to another, or that you've seen something that was a bit confusing. And then when you go back and sit down, load the data, you start to relate those things back to the image. So you start thinking, oh yeah, that little minute difference in topography there, that's actually relating back to that anomaly in the data. So you get a very, very deep knowledge of the landscape um, through that action combined with an understanding of the data. And then you have the process uh, um, of processing it all, which involves sitting for very long periods of time trying to work out both um, the right uh, mathematical processes to go through to bring out uh, the best of the data, I suppose. But also, you develop a, a very keen geophysical eye. So all the time, you're trying to work out what best brings out aspects of the archaeology you're trying to look for. Um, so on this image, you've got things like an amphitheater down here, and then a whole set of quarries up there. And lovely different marks, and you're trying to really Think about drawing out those marks. And in a way, it's like doing a, something like a painting. You're trying to think about the relationship of tone, of colour, all sorts of little subtle things like that to really draw out what you, you can understand about the archaeological landscape. And again, the more you're spending time with the data, the more it's becoming part of your understanding of that landscape and going quite deep into sort of who you are and your link with that landscape. And then, in a long, long process of working with geophysics, you have interpretation. So you spend hours and hours and hours sitting, uh, trying to draw lines in a way that reflects both the complexity of the data, 
with a way that will simplify it enough to allow other people to understand it, or in order to be able to talk about it with a degree of clarity. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, I spent a very long time doing all the data for Oldborough, and I started to think how you begin to get things like styles. I realised my style of interpreting data and drawing those lines had developed in the sort of 12 years I've been doing geophysics. But in a way, that relates to the people who taught me originally, and I sort of copied what they did and then developed my own style. And even within one site, that my style differs according to the, um, the sorts of data I'm trying to deal with. So the interpretation drawings actually become this lovely history of all the people that you've worked with and the sites you've worked on and the ways you've tried to deal with things. And then, just briefly, I'll talk about how this now gets worked into actual, sort of, taken on into more fine art um, areas. So in terms of remote sensing, aerial photography has been a really, uh, I don't know, of very much interest to artists because of <coughs> that unique view that you get of landscapes and the very abstract view that you get of human relationships with those landscapes. So Eric Aurelius did some beautiful uh, aerial paintings and watercolours uh, when he was the war artist in the Second World War, working with the RAF. And it's this idea of in the enduring uh, human relationship with the land. And you've got people like Peter Lanyon, who uh, did lots of work from a glider. And there's something about aerial photography which is very accessible and immediately beautiful. You don't even really need to do anything with it. It's just lovely in itself. But geophysics has been much less looked at by artists. And whether this is because the data is harder to come by, is more difficult to interpret, I don't, I don't know. But it is beautiful. And some artists just use it, literally just take a bit of geophysics and put it on a wall, which is very nice. Uh, one uh, lovely artist who's working is Paul Musgrove, who's worked a lot with Dominic Powsland on the geophysics at West Hesterton and produced some lovely stuff. And then just quickly to end, I'll talk through a few things that I've been working on with geophysics. So um, this is from Twin, where we did lots of work. Um, and it was the idea that in a screen print, you can pick back, put back the layers in the landscape that you've unpicked from the geophysics. But also in this print, I combined it with things like aerial photography and techniques <coughs> on the land, like cloud field. But that all the things, all those different levels of understanding of the landscape could come out in the screen print because yeah, all the different data you worked with could come together. And then this is of a field uh, outside Tivoli, outside Rome, um, where we found a Roman villa up in the top of the geophysics. But for much of the survey, we went through all this quiet area, we didn't find anything until the last day we found a villa in the corner. <laughs> um, and I worked with a uh, wax crayon and watercolour, and I put lots of the archaeology on with the white wax crayon, so I couldn't actually see what I was doing at all. And I thought that was a nice way of playing with the idea that with geophysics, you never quite know what you're going to find until you put the watercolour on top. So uh, that's quite a nice process. And the final one um, was some stuff from the walls. And just thinking about the ways that you can use different textures to build up and take out these beautiful marks that you get in the geophysical images. And once you separate those out, um, you've got a lovely drawing to deal with. And it just sort of makes me think very differently about the geophysical data that I work with. Uh, as a result of drawing with it as well. So just to conclude, really, that um, geophysics may seem uh, scientific and like a nice grayscale image, but actually there's this beautiful subsurface wor world that we can work with. We've got all these shadows of the past that come out through the image. And really, it's developing a way of seeing that appreciates that all the aspects of archaeology that we work with we're so lucky because we can sort of tie them into all these other ways of working and these other creative strands and for thinking about not just things on the surface, but getting right down into the geology and lots of different temporalities. Yeah? <laughs>